This past week, one of my Tesla students asked me about online whiteboard app. And uh, the reason for that is that they're doing some online tutoring and they wanted to do some pronunciation work where they put in the, the word and then the student can mark up the text or they can demonstrate on the board. Um, so I introduced them to whiteboard.fi thought I would introduce you as well. So just go to whiteboard.fi and when you get there, there are two buttons. One says new class, one says join class. All you have to do is click on new class and you can create a new class. Now, if you um, are using the same browser, um, the next time you do come after you create a class, it'll actually say resume and you can actually go in and uh, resume that class. But I wouldn't rely on that because sometimes you'll be switching computers and also if you do actually clear the history or whatever, it may wipe out that and then you can't remember what class it was you had. So um, what you do, go to new class, uh, type in your name. This is the name that will be displayed to all the students. So make sure that you uh, choose a name that is appropriate. And then you'll notice it gives you a new whiteboard.fi slash and then a three uh, letter number combination code. And that will be your new class. And you'll notice there's also some tabs. There's a few things. Uh, it says my class and then it says my whiteboard. Um, my whiteboard is the teacher's whiteboard that all students will see. My class, will, as, as students will join, you'll see in a second, you will see thumbnails of all of the uh, students' whiteboards there. What happens is each student gets an individual whiteboard that only the teacher can see, and, but you can, as teacher, can see all of the student whiteboards at the same time even on here in thumbnail format, or you can click on each one and individually bring each one up. Um, now, also at the top, you'll notice there's the room code, which you'll remember. And also under the gear, you can do things like you can hide the students' names if you want to just make it so it's anonymous, so you can try and um, not be biased towards one student or another for assessment purposes. Uh, you can clear all whiteboards so they've drawn on their whiteboards or whatever, and you can wipe them all at the same time. You can also individually wipe each board by just clicking on each student and wipe the board. And most importantly, you can close the room. When you close the room, that code dies with it. And so everything disappears. Your student, your whiteboard, all the student whiteboards, the whole class all disappears. So here we go. I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to take this URL and I am going to become a student. And I am going to create, I've got incognito here, a student account. We'll call the student Joe. Join whiteboard class. And voila, now the student side of thing, they see teacher who the teacher is, they can save my whiteboard. So you can actually, if I draw, I'll just show you really quickly here, I can actually go in and save it as an image and you can download it after that. Um, I'm just gonna clear that. And they can also see the teacher whiteboard. There's the two tabs, my whiteboard, teacher's whiteboard. So a student, they can have a, just a very few things that they can do. All right, let's go back to be teacher. So in the teacher, you'll notice now there's Joe's little whiteboard been white this way. If I click on it, there's nothing there because remember I wiped Joe's whiteboard. So I'm going to draw on it mm -hmm. as Joe. Switch back as teacher. You now see the thumbnail version. You can click on it and make it bigger. All right. Now as teacher, I can erase this one. Erased. Done. Joe's will disappear. Let's start off. I'm going to show you a sample of what we can do as a teacher. So I'm going to go in here. There's a few, very few tools. There's pen tools, line tools, polygon tools, square tool, text tool. You can also move around the page if you make the page really big. Um, you can also use the eyedropper tool to grab a color. And you can change both the pen color, the background color, a fill color and background color. All of those are fairly simplistic. There's a few things I wish that were in here. I wish you could import an image into here so you could draw on the image. Um, and I wish you could also password protect these sites. But it, considering that you can close each one, it's not a real big deal. You could do one each day if you wanted to. All right. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do a text thing because I want to show you something that's just a little bit of a quirk to it, but for a good reason. So I'm going to type in two words here. Okay. Um, and I'm going to change my font size so it's easier to see. All right. Good. Let's, let's actually move it around just a smidgen here. I want it a little further down. And you'll notice now I'm a little bit off the page here. I'm going to go back here a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now what's interesting as I type, and when I'm in the, the uh, text tool, it is not live. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go back to the student one and go to my teacher's whiteboard. There's nothing there. And the reason for that is because when you're in text tool, you can type and make mistakes and that type of thing. 
um, it doesn't actually post it until I click out of the text tool. So I got to go to something like the pen tool or the line tool or something or the move tool. So I can click on the move tool, for example, and I go back here and there it is. The student can see my text now. So it's just something to note. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to actually switch to pen tool and I'm going to actually change the color. So I hit stroke and hit the color. I'm going to change a slightly bigger pen tool. And now I'm going to mark some stress on here. So for pronunciation work. All right. So now if I go back to the student one, they can actually see it. Again, the pen tool is live. So as I draw, they'll actually see it live, what's going on. So I can mark off the stress here, for example, for them. Um, and I can actually ask them to do some stuff. So they can go to their whiteboard, they can go to theirs, and they can type in the, we'll do the same one, for example, although I would normally give them, I could orally give them different words. And then they can go in and mark their thing. I'm going to change the, the pen tool, though. So I'm going to undo that. And now I'm going to do the same thing. And if I go back to my class whiteboards, I will actually see the work from the students. And I can click on it. And I can, again, erase it, close it, whatever. Um, now, as a teacher, I can draw on my own board, but I can't save my own board for some reason. I'm not sure why. Class, I can see the class ones, but I can't save each individual student's item. But remember, the students can actually download their own. So you can ask students to download stuff, but they can't actually uh, download the teacher's whiteboard. And so they will get their own, but they don't get the teachers. So just one little thing to note that there's not a lot of options for saving these once it's um, once you put it on there. But that's it. Now, um, again, I can close this. In fact, I will. I'll close the student one, and I'll even I'll close this tab, and I'll go back in after I've left to whiteboard.fi, and you'll notice there's the resume class. And all I do is click on it, and it goes back to the class because it remembers what it was. But if I was to wipe the history of this, then I wouldn't be able to do that. So I'd have to remember that three digit code. Now, after all of that, I would like to close the room because now that I'm done this video, I don't want everybody going to this and messing this up or whatever, causing problems. So I'm going to close the room. And it says it's been closed. There is no warning. If you close a room, everything's wiped. Remember that the code is gone, everything's gone. So just be aware that you would then have to create a new class with a new code. So hopefully that helps you. I would like to hear what you would do with this. Um, so if you have any comments, please share them in the comments below. If you're interested in more of these videos, please subscribe. And if uh, you're interested in more of these type of tools, you can go to my website, nathanhall.ca. Thank you.